Is Sean up ready? Was just both. He just used up a bunch of it right here because he's on pit road at the right time. And this is what Larry was talking about in the opening. When they do, just <laughs> you can tell he's done some off-road racing. <laughs> you you have to give credit to John Andretti, spotter, crew chief. Two out of the last three weeks, they have made a timely trip to pit road. Pocono, two weeks ago, they did the same thing. That's exactly right. It made you credit for 720. It was but a 360. <laughs> it sure was impressive. It was very nice. Nice save. Well, this will change things a lot. I mean, I think there are some cars out there, Robbie Gordon, uh, maybe even Tony Stewart, that didn't even get on pit road make some adjustments. A timely caution at 67 laps with Kurt Busch in the lead. Pit road is open. This is a quickie yellow. They all are here at Sears Point, so every car can pit when pit road is open. Jeff Hammond. All right, now Bill Elliott's in the pits right now. They're changing four tires, taking a half a pound out of both front tires. And Bill said, boy, I got to have some water. I'm working pretty hard, and he's down and away, down the map. Peter Kurt Busch, the 97 car, they will make a four tire change and make a chassis adjustment. He was loose on the right handers, tight on the left. But this will make a 43 lap run to the finish. And he's down and away. It's going to be a race off here, road. Does he beat the nine car, Mike? Kurt Busch is first out ahead of Bill Elliott. Well, he just barely was, but he is first out. I tell you, Rusty Wallace's group, they look like they picked up a couple of spots for Rusty. He went from 6th to 4th there. You see him in the 2 car right behind Bobby Levine. Maybe he got his car adjusted up a little bit. It's a good caution for him because he followed back early in the race, but there he is, finds himself back in the top five now. And Brett Bodine led that lap. And I tell you, folks, Bill, talking about needing water. These cars got a bunch of coolers in them. They're really hot inside, working as hard as you do on this road course. It takes its toll at the end of the day. Here's the rush to the end of pit road. Kurt Busch, Bill Elliott, Bobby Labonte. Just like they came in, and here comes Rusty here comes Wallace. Rusty. Good stop for Bobby Hamilton, that group in the 55 car as well. Caution is out. We'll be right back. The Dodge Save Mart 350 on Fox is brought to you by Old Spice, the deodorant of NASCAR. And by Autotrader.com, the biggest, best-used car site on the planet. There's the rock, Alcatraz. Kind of like the NASCAR penalty box. Whoa, around goes Todd Bodine, who was the race leader. He and John Andretti did not stop under the caution. Andretti had just stopped, so Todd Bodine too hot into turn 11, and he goes around. And we're pretty sure Todd Bodine had not pitted. That's how he assumed the lead. What he was going to do is run just a few more laps, come in under green, then he could make it to the end without stopping. His older brother Brett led during the caution period and came to pit road as we went to green to be assured of being able to go the distance without another pit stop. I think he was looking back right here. He sees John take a look to the inside. And he just got too much rear brake. And what you have to remember, he was out there on much older tires, older tires. than any of the rest of these drivers were. And he said those guys carry him down in there a little too fast. You hear the rear tires? You hear that thing wheel hop, Larry? Bum, 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 bum. Yep. This has a lot of rear brake in that car. flag waving that is just a local yellow for that part of the track turn 11 means no passing till you get past the incident the incident being Todd Bodine's car and as we said uh, Larry the pitch strategy for John Andretti look where he's putting he's back up there leading the race now surprising that this is the first time John Andretti has ever led a NASCAR road race as Mark Martin ducks under Bobby Labonte that's fifth place and he's on equal tires to everybody else he just hit pit road right as the caution was coming out which is perfectly legal. When they all went in, he was already out there. I think that uh, caution really was a big break for Tony Stewart, particularly Larry, because he was really, really marred back in traffic. Now he's found himself up in the top 10, running eight. And we know he's got a pretty good hot rod. Bobby Gordon, on the other hand, he's still struggling. He's way back in there, about the 17th looks like. But John Andretti leads from Kurt Busch. Here's Matt. I like that caution to shuffle some of the pitch strategy as far as fuel mileage goes. Jimmy Finnegan, you're hoping to stop around lap 73 or 4. Now, how is that going to play out? How close are you going to be? Can you make it? Now, nah, we ain't going to be able to make it. We'll be probably about four laps short, three, four laps short. So, uh, didn't work 
out, but this rubber meat crew, they're doing a heck of a job, and Kurt, he's awesome. Jimmy Fagan has one road course win, Dick. They're hoping for a second one today. Bobby Labonte looking for his first road course win. He, too, will be four laps short on fuel. They were going to go until about lap 71, which would have gotten them to the end. Mark Martin, no changes whatsoever on the car in the last round of pit stops. He, too, is four laps short. Sonoma, John Andretti leading with 35 laps to go in a Dodge. Last road course win by a Dodge was Riverside. Richard Petty back in 1977. Log on to FoxSports.com. Keyword leader for your shot at collectible gear from your favorite driver. Brought to you by Lotrimon Ultra. As we go through the second half, let's head upstairs. Uh, Darryl, you talked about the degree of driver difficulty on the road course, one of only two on the Winston Cup circuit. At this stage of the race, physically, what kind of wear and tear is there on the driver? Well, you, you go through a lot, Chris. I mean, your right arm, you're over there shifting. Your right hand, you've been shifting all these gears. And uh, you got your legs are getting tired from breaking all the time. You've got to focus on this racetrack. You've got 11 places to mess up. So right now, not only physically are you starting to give up a little bit, mentally you're starting to give up a little bit. And uh, I'd say that favors that cat right there on the screen because he's a young kid and he's doing a great job. And uh, I'd say that he's going to just be focused the whole way to the finish. But then you look at Bill and Rusty and Mark and Ricky all right there behind him. Let's look at Kyle Petty who goes straight off track at turn eight. Never mind, turn nine. We'll, we'll come back for 10. He could not He could have never gotten away with that a year ago. He'd have been upside down right there. Because that was all heels. That was a dirt bank last year. I don't know. I like this fellow right here. John Andretti looking for his first road course win. His uncle, the great Formula One champion, Indy 500 champion, Mario Andretti, the Grand Marshal here today. You know, Mario has a winery. Just 20 miles from here, and Dre's signature wines that are served in some of the hospitality tents here at Sir Sears Point. This must be the only auto racetrack in the country that serves wine by the glass. Mm. Well, maybe Watkins Glen. Mm. That's one of those things that makes you go, hmm. Would you like some cheese with that wine? <laughs> <laughs> Got the cheese and pour the wine. <laughs> uh, Dick Bergeron. That Mark Martin was going to be about four laps short on fuel. His crew chief has just told him on the radio to back it on down, take it easy, see if he can somehow or another eat up just two laps. Save two laps if he can. That's almost impossible here. That's a gallon of fuel because yeah. you're getting about four miles a gallon. Two laps is four laps. Uh, you know, you look at John Andretti, our leader right now, the 43 car. Remember, he's working with a new crew chief that came on board about three races ago, Brandon Thomas. And talk about crew chief, the crew chief of Kurt Busch in the 97, Jimmy Finney. Remember, he won this race in 1997 as Mark Martin's crew chief. Won it from 
the pole. Kurt Busch started outside pole today. John Andretti has come from 13th, and here comes Rusty Wallace. Well, we, we have got us the battle for third. His three guys right here, actually four guys, the Ricky's right there behind them. They're having a pretty good go of it. I think they want to get up here and get after this kid. While they're doing all that, though, the Gibbs guys are back here chasing them down. Yeah, Tony Stewart has climbed to seventh and Bobby Labonte eighth. And there they are with Bobby Hamilton. But when you look at Bill Elliott, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, and Ricky Rudd, it's just almost like closing your eyes and going back to a road course race about 10, 10 years ago. Hamilton trying to take advantage of Labonte. Bobby has the inside, cutting toward one. Here you see the Fox tracks. There's 132 miles an hour to start finish line, climbing up the hill now here to turn two, down to about 57 miles per hour. Look at Blaney. Blaney hanging right in there with these guys. Climbing back up the hill here. Ryan Newman's right behind him. It's a great race, guys. I mean, got a bunch of guys here that are sitting here poised to... Stewart, he's, remember he got a little off sequence to some of these leaders on pit stops, and now he is up to seventh place with his crew chief, Greg Zipidelli. Here's Matt. Well, Mike Tony Stewart's going to be about seven laps shy of making it to the finish, his crew chief, Greg Zipidelli. So when do you pit knowing you have to pit? I think somewhere between 95 and 100. Uh, we'll come down the debate is whether we're going to just try and pump fuel or uh, fuel and tires. Well, Tony Stewart has already been on a winning track last night. He took his fire suit and helmet and went over to Altamont about an hour and a half away. Set a new track record for his second of his heat and won the feature with a last lap pass in a Western State sprint car. It's going to be a busy guy. Next Thursday, he'll go to West Lebanon, New York, climbing a Brian Bowie's Dirt Modified. He's getting to be the Kenny Schrader of, of his age. Put on the helmet and go. Well, what about fuel mileage, Dick Bergman? Well, John Andretti's in a deeper hole than almost anybody else, Mike. He can only go to about 100 before he is going to have to stop and pit. So they are hoping that somehow or another they get a caution flag that brings everybody in and takes away the disadvantage that they are facing. Yeah, Dick, because what we have to remember, he pitted two laps earlier than the leaders because he dove to pit road as the caution came out on lap 66. All the leaders were in on 68. Jeff Hammond. Well, I've been listening, Mike, and a lot of you guys talk about who can't make it. Well, I know a couple of guys are telling me who they who can. Believe it, the 15, uh, Michael Waldrop says he can, and there's a few minutes ago, the 88 car of Dale Jarrett, his crew chief, Todd Parrott, said, hey, man, take care of your stuff. We can go the distance. So there's a couple of guys down there who are going to roll the dice and feel like they can make it all the way. Yeah, well, that's good news for Michael, uh, Jeff, because he's running in 12th place. So, uh, I mean, he's got a pretty fast car. He's able to keep up with these cats. On the other hand, I was watching Dale Jarrett come down through the S's while ago, and I saw the 88 on the side of his car. And from where I'm standing, that's not a good thing. You should be seeing the nose of his the car. Nose. Well, that's the first good thing that's happened this weekend to Jarrett, who had trouble in practice, did not qualify, started from a provisional, and currently runs in 28th position. Battle for the lead. Kurt Busch continues to stay locked on to the rear bumper of John Andretti. laps to go at Sonoma, California in Finian Raceway. John Andretti leading Kurt Busch, Bill Elliott, Rusty Wallace, and Mark Martin. Wait a minute. I didn't know we did these. Though. All time to face the music. Radio Shack Trivia. What three drivers have been running at the finish in every Winston Cup race, all 15 races this year? Sterling. Sterling before today. Jimmy Johnson. 